We were genuinely curious to find out what the women of Britain think on the topic of sexism in the UK. So we decided to hit the streets of London and um, speak to as many women as possible to find out what their opinions are. Some of the girls that we spoke to said yes, they had experienced sexism, but a lot of them said no, they have never experienced sexism in the UK. We're just doing an interview about sexism. So excuse me. Uh, me and my friend were just doing an interview about uh, sexism in the UK. Have any of you girls experienced sexism before? You? I don't think I have. You don't think you have? That's good. That's good. I'm High five. Good. That's awesome. We live in a good society. That's great. Well, I'm from the Czech Republic. Czech Republic. Have you ever experienced sexism in the Czech Republic? No, I have. No. 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 So, okay, that's good. That's good news. That's right. I like that answer. Interview over. Do you ever experience any sexism when you're working there? Like, uh, men, um, do men ever be sexist towards you when you're working? I think no. You think no? No. What do you guys think about sexism in the UK? Well, it's rampant. Have you experienced sexism yourselves here in the UK? I was a pretty big feminist. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, I'm a huge you're, yeah, you're a huge feminist as well. Okay. I can manage men, you know, so you can, yeah. if someone uh, slaps me right here, on the bum. I will slap him right here, so, so problem it's fine. solved. <laughs> problem, oh, you solved the problem yourself. You don't, you don't, yeah, you don't have to go to the government and start a, a, no. start a TV program on BBC3 no. about it. I meet women. Knowing how he manipulated me um, does make me incredibly angry. Why? Doesn't make sense fucking manipulating people and that's not a good thing. So you don't want to be that guy. If you are that guy, say for instance you are quite try hard with your day game or your night game, you're doing pickup. I know I'm being a little bit harsh. I mean there's a little subliminal, subliminal shots being fired back and forth here, there and whatever. I'm truthful with my shit, you know what I mean? I don't respect dudes that try and be slimy or creepy or seedy. We fuck around on YouTube, we have fun, but we're not trying to fucking snake anyone out of nothing. We're not doing no fucking sleazy pickup lines. All about the sub communications. All about being authentically used. All about owning yourself. There's ways of doing things. So you have to take corrective measures and do the fucking right thing by yourself. Just like I try and do. Just like the guys that I teach try and do. So I'm here with these lovely ladies at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not actually bisexual, but I've had the experiences and I love it. Yeah, yeah. What would be the ideal thing you would like to receive from a guy? Like, would it be something funny, something light? Funny, yeah, always funny. Oh, no, I have weird. 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 Yeah, something weird. My boyfriend sent me one of these, like, it was, came in a letter and I was at work and I opened it up and it was a glitter bomb. Yeah. And it was a glitter bomb at the office. Like, something yeah. weird like that. It's That's cool. Nice. It's a bit out there. Something so it's not, not your standard shit equations or something different, right? Like a joke? If guys could approach you more calibrated, right, mm -hmm. during the day or mm -hmm. at night, which one would you prefer? If they did it in a nice manner during the day, would be lovely. Stay game is her number one choice. We're going to be out now because uh, me and this lady have to get a drink. <laughs> I think these techniques are really, really, really insidious. Like the one I, f I feel Addy used on me, which is sort of commonly known as negging, um, which he opened Meaning, up. meaning. Meaning um, to kind of make a negative comment about a woman to put themselves, put the woman down so that she's disarmed and feels kind of obligated to continue the conversation. What did he say to you was the opening comment? So his opening comment was, it can't be that bad. Um, and I, without skipping a beat, said, look, my face just does this. And he said, look, you look really miserable. You know, look like you've had a really horrible day. Um, and that automatically made me feel like I had to compensate, that I had to be really polite and really sort of open um, to compensate for that, that impression. Negging to bring down the self-esteem of a woman so she wants your validation more. Now that's actually some very outdated and old school philosophy that a lot of the old outdated coaches used to teach whereas on the other hand there are coaches out there who teach guys how to better express themselves and actually build genuine and authentic connections so to simply label the whole seduction boot camp or the whole seduction community and the dating niche as one bad thing that honestly just shows a lot of ignorance on the side of BBC News. Got a bit of coaching with Addy uh, about a week ago. 
um, it was absolutely excellent. It was, you know, allows you to bring yourself into the situation but in a very calm manner so that you're acting completely authentically. You're not just being given a bunch of lines and told to rehearse them. It's a very organic interaction that you're then able to um, adapt um, according to what, inform what feedback he's giving to you. To spread those techniques without naming it that, without saying this is what we're doing when manipulating women is really insidious. That in itself is, is something that I feel really needs to be addressed. Manipulated, um, this is fundamentally incorrect. Seduction between a man and a woman can only happen with interest from both parties. She doesn't understand what the game is. They haven't actually done any research. Pick Up has evolved from some cheesy cringeworthy shit that relied on lines, tactics and techniques and had guys dressed up in weird outfits doing weird shit from 15, 20 years ago. Now it is a mix of fucking evolutionary science, psychology, biology, sociology, human behavior, and spirituality. Now a lot of people don't like to fucking address this and say it's a con and a uh, game is a relabeling of it, but it has advanced to game, it's advanced to seduction, it is no longer motherfucking pickup. So are these dumbass comedians trying to get into chick's pants by making them fucking laugh? They don't get it. They're these creepy fucking pickup artists from back in the day or try to emulate the style from back in the day. How are they gonna get it? They're not. They they ain't with it like that. When you're trying to be a fucking comedian or a prank video dude or a cheesy pickup artist, you are try hard. You are reaction seeking, you are approval seeking, you are in reaction to society's views. They're not your views, they're the views imposed upon you by society and you just react to those. You are socially conditioned by some bullshit propaganda that you fucking picked up, excuse the pun, and also some shite that your fucking parents may have told you in your friend group and your peer group or what you think people want you to fucking say and what you think people want to hear. Well, we are joined now from central London by Emily, who is one of the women approached by the so-called Scottish pickup artist, Addy A-Game. Uh, Miles, to you in a minute, but Emily, I want to come to you first. If you can bear to, just, just share with us what happened to you. What was your experience? Hi, yeah, so I was approached um, in Glasgow. I was chatted up in the middle of the day um, by Addy A-Game. Uh, and that must affect you in all sorts of different ways. I mean, in a mad, colossal invasion of your privacy, but also, I mean, how did it affect you? You tell me. I mean, the invasion of the privacy is so um, is so awful that it seems uh, quite overt and straightforward. I think the things that really, really upset me was the fact that I had absolutely no agency. Um, I was being targeted as if um, for sport. Uh, you know, Ali referred to this as a game, um, and I was just an object within that. Um, and that is incredibly frustrating. Yeah, and I we don't get offended. We're just all like, okay, it wasn't right. Like, yeah. I'd yeah. rather that happen. Be self-amused. Amuse yourself. Be happy. Have that good, fun fucking vibe. Because, as they say, the stuff that makes you laugh will make other people laugh because it's genuine. What you feel, other people will feel. Mirror neurons firing from one human being to another human being through your subcommunication, through your micro facial tells and expressions. That shit is translated authentically from person to person. Not this whole trying hard sarcasm bullshit. It's okay to watch, but it has no substance. How are you going to use that in life? You're just going to fucking run around trying to fucking be this entertainer monkey, you fucking bum. Be a fucking man and work on yourself. And that includes getting girls. And if people don't get your sense of humour, fine. You're still happy. Right. Do what feels natural. Yeah. If, yeah, it, if you had a good chemistry, yeah. I think you know if you got that feeling, and then you go with that feeling. Yeah. 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 I think. I, then you, you leave it. I think know. guys totally overthink it. They they try and yeah. the game plan. See see if they had um like women have a lot more options than men these days, right? But see if they had like a lot more going on. They wouldn't like put you up there as their top priority. They would just have you there as someone they like and if you ended up not speaking to them, they wouldn't be that bothered. And I guess that would be, they would be more natural. Would you find that more attractive? Yeah, they shouldn't play games. They just don't play games, just be honest. It doesn't work because it's like, well, I'm not interested anymore. And also like, shit chat. 
like, sorry, but don't say, hey, how are you? How was your day? Yep. I don't give a fuck, mate. All, all I want to know, <laughs> right, is how weird you got tonight or how weird yeah, you've been today. Really I want to have a bit of like, how have you, you done? Yeah. yeah. She's gangster, that's true. Don't try to be too overly nice. And the fact that they refer to this as seduction is, is such an awful misnomer, isn't it? I mean, it's, that makes it almost sound romantic. This is, this is predatory, grubby behaviour. That's appalling, isn't it? How did you feel when you see that? I mean, that's, that's disgusting. We don't do tricks. Anyone that's done any pickup would know that they don't work. And the conversation that then ensued was me just being polite. Um, and I think that, that being characterised as me being very, very interested um, in Addy was infuriating. When you're doing it to kind of get a reaction or trying to make people feel bad or make other people feel bad or look bad so you can fucking get approval and popularity that's some fucking childish high school shit and then try and dress up like you know better like you are the fucking like i said the all-knowing all-seeing entity that is fucking some weak shit so if you're doing this correct it this is what these videos are for we are trying to help I mean, how do you feel now this documentary has gone out tonight? Now there's at least some exposure of what's been going on here. I mean, I think um, it's a fantastic start. I think what Miles and his team have done uh, is, is such um, a wonderful way to start the conversation because the, there's definitely a, a need for it. Um, but I think that we need to address the, the wider reasons as to why men feel comfortable to approach women in the street, um, to treat them as sort of objects. Um, and to have these conversations that are very, very predatory. Um, it's a very, very common occurrence with women, uh, whether it's filmed or not. Um, and I think that needs to be discussed as well. Oh, you met him during the day and he got your number? I wouldn't meet a guy in a couple stop. I, I think the guy should really get to the point. Yeah. Someone to ask me out. It's pretty much right, yeah, for me. Right. Right. Excellent. I get bored. I get bored quite quickly. So yeah, if you talk to a guy on Tinder well. for a week, after a week, you're over it. Yeah. You're over it. Otherwise, you feel you like they're so trying to work bored. out if you're worth it or not, and then that makes you feel shit. You just want to have fun, really. Like, get out there, live life. Women are a lot more sexual, like, uh, yeah. experimental, right? We're more adventurous than you think, as yeah. well. Yeah. But because they're ashamed, they're not allowed to kind of bring that side out. So, um, no, I think if you're comfortable, then you do bring that side out. Have you porn and use dildos? Who does it? Who has threesome? Who does it? Yet. They love it, see? It's, <laughs> it's some new shit. She's very sexually free, that's cool. We don't be called a bitch for rejecting someone. We don't be called rude for just closing the interaction down. Yeah. She said it was uncomfortable. There are girls who are maybe not secure enough to say no, and then they are in a situation they don't want to be in. Right. Um, why are they allowed out without an escort? You see, women keep making the case for Islam, by the way. But why are they allowed out without an escort? There are girls, she means over 18s. Again, we have to treat them like toddlers. Right, so there are girls, little girls, in frilly little skirts with pigtails. Um, yes, uh, small little toddler girls who are maybe not secure enough to say no. So. So they can pay taxis and drive a car, but they might not be able to say no. Why do, why do you keep treating women like toddlers? What do you do that for? She's not even talking about herself. She said it was uncomfortable. There are girls, not her, there are girls who are maybe, maybe, not secure enough to say no. Why is that your problem? Are you secure enough to say no? And then they're in a situation they don't want to be in. I mean, I just, I, I I can't, I've never met a woman that weak before, you know what I mean, who who doesn't know how to say no, what? And, and here's, here's the thing as well, right, see if that woman, right, these, these grown women are not secure enough to say no, right, okay, let's, 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 let's fall for it and believe that for a second, right, that these women can't say no, why is that his fault? It, it, has he got some radar where he's able to uh, find women that can't say no? I mean, what, what, what's it going to do with him? That's not his fucking problem, is it? And how is he supposed to know that she's not saying no because she can't say no? How, how is he supposed to know that she's only saying yes because she's too insecure to say no? How fucking stupid is this? You want to, I mean, you, you want to treat women like adults, but then they do this shit and it's like, oh, so now I've got to treat them like a child again, right? Okay, right, I'll treat them like a child. And then the feminists go, hey, stop treating her like a child. It's like, but... Uh, <laughs> One thing that we've found is that there is no one unified opinion on it. Uh, what one woman finds sexist, another finds beautiful and romantic. So uh, there is no consensus on this issue at all.